92.3 Amp Radio. What up, familia in the building? A man that sold over 20 million records what? and doesn't even give enough about retail. <laughs> oh, he's all been right. listening to music, all I right, see. Right. I like that. He I like rocks that. fat laced Adidas and is one of the dopest MCs of all time. Ludacris in the building. Oh, Woo! man. What an intro. Thank you very much, man. That means a lot to me. We want to congratulate you because we all know, and we're going to break the news here. Yeah. You have triplets on the way. Oh, no, that's not the case. <laughs> <laughs> Triplets on the way. Don't let don't 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 put these rumors out there. People will really believe them. You can't do that. You have three babies on the way. That's true. You have your album, Ludoversal. <laughs> oh goodness, here we go. <laughs> you have Furious Seven. Yeah. And also a real life baby with your beautiful newly well, wife. I guess I do have triplets then. <laughs> Sorry, I stand corrected. You are one hundred percent right. Definitely, man. I appreciate that. So uh we're gonna start off by giving you a baby shower present. We know you love strip clubs. Absolutely. That's great. This is the greatest baby present ever. <laughs> it goes along with it, right? Yes. So um, we, we it, got though. you, man. Because you love strip clubs, we got you two strippers walking in right now. All right. Uh, can we have female strippers, please? Uh, the situation is that uh, something happened with the strip club and they send us two dudes instead of two girls. Okay, well, well respectfully, we can send them right the hell back out the door. Man. But guys, please do your thing. Luda, if you can look right now. Nah, man. This is no, your you present. Want to. What the hell? <laughs> oh, man. So they gotta keep that. On, they gotta keep that for like the until it goes away. That's yeah, what the whole weekend. I love that. Luda, like I gotta take one for the gram. I yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Do a, it for the gram. LP, the shortest one, has Luda. I like it. I Dan, like the it. tall one, has Verso on it. He got screwed because people are like, "What does Verso yeah. mean?" But Luda's tight. I know. Yo, amazing, man. That 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 is great promotion right there, man. Luda, what applaud you guys. That's one of those hashtag now that's ludicrous kind of situations. That is one hundred percent ludicrous, man. <laughs> Luda, thank you guys. Hey. Love Ludaverse. Thank you, man. Coming out on the 31st. Which Album number eight for me, but it feels like number one. So it's old Luda mixed with new Luda, and I guarantee you, you will be 100% oversatisfied. Fat least Adidas. That's how you know he took it old school right there, man. Absolutely. We Recently, just dropped that Call Your Bluff video, too. Yes, yeah, sir. we saw it. It's a dope yeah, video, man. Thank you. And you're coming hard on Call Your Bluff. <laughs> for you to say that, I mean, I think that's a good thing. No, it is, but if you listen to the lyrics and... This isn't about anybody in particular? Nah, it's not about anyone in particular. It's like over the years, just me uh, observing so many things and me, and even with the, the nowadays rappers all on social media and talking so much mess about each other, but when they see each other in person, it's something yeah. totally different. So it's kind of like that thing where people talk really tough when they're in the booth and it's like four walls, yeah. they're enclosed in, and then when, as soon as they step outside, it's something totally different. Yeah, it's whack. It's Dude, rappers stop. nowadays... Not like back in the day, they were doing real drive-bys, now they're doing emoji drive-bys. Exactly. You know, like, there you go. Who does emoji drive-bys? There you go. Two she little does in the building. Furious 7, <laughs> about to drop. And I have a question to you about you uh, in regards to cars, Ludacris. Yeah, man. Did you ever get yourself that convertible Ferrari 360 Spider? I had the 458 Italia Ferrari. And I'm going to tell you what, man, this is some good, interesting information for you to hear. Because, right. I, you know, it's all honesty when it comes from me. From a guy who is very, very humble in the in the regards of being blessed to be able to drive so many different supercars and extremely expensive cars from Bugattis to Lamborghinis and Ferraris. All of my people will tell you I own that car and I had to take it back in a year. And let me tell you why. Why? Because there's absolutely no reason to own a damn car like that <laughs> unless you can drive 200 miles an hour every day wherever you go. Period. That's so I'm funny. a realist, man. Look, once you get past the whole stunting stage of it, because that's really what people want the car for, right. to ride down the street and everybody sees you in this expensive car and yeah. it puts you on another level. I'm past that. You know, respectfully, if I cannot, if I'm going to get speeding tickets every day, there's no reason for me to have a Ferrari. Absolutely. I'd rather rent one for the weekend and then, you know, or take it to a racetrack. But there's no reason for me to own that damn car. <laughs> I'd rather have a Cadillac or my Acura Legend where I know that if I put my pedal to the floor, it's only going to hit about 60 <laughs> or 70 miles an hour. With some, hub, with some hubcap spinners on the Acura. You know exactly. What that's what I'm telling you. But I think it, that's why we like Cadillac so much because we want to go fast, but a Cadillac is only going to go butt so damn fast. I ask you specifically about that Ferrari because I would say it was about 10 years ago. Yeah. You love going to Mr. Chow's up I in Beverly Hills. I still love going to Mr. Chow's, man. And I saw you there. Yeah. I wasn't in radio just yet. Oh, but okay. you were chilling in Beverly Hills at Mr. Chow's right. and you were chilling there with your crew uh -oh. and a Ferrari 360 convertible rolled up for oh, ballet. Wow. You were waiting for your ride. Right. 
And I remember you saying out loud, man, I'll buy that car <laughs> right now, cash. I'll take it right now. I think now. I remember that. You know, and <laughs> I have so the most crazy. selective memory in the world. <laughs> I I honestly think I remember that. That's crazy that you say that. Wow. And I was in that car. Wow. Yeah, no. I worked in valet parking. Are you serious? <laughs> what? Dang. And I was like, oh shoot, Ludo's gonna buy this car right now, dog. <laughs> He's gonna drop the change right here. The world is too small, man. And, and like your boys were like, small. no, Ludo, continue. Like trying to hold you back. You were getting in a fight or something. And you're like, no, I'll buy that car cash right now. That food thinks is all that. Because the guy got out kind of. You have to blame that on the, the, the liquor bar at the Mr. Child. That's what you blame that on. Whatever the hell I was drinking that night, it's that it's that bar's fault. But man, uh, <laughs> Furious Seven. Yeah. We've heard it from Vin, The Rock. We've heard it from yourself, man. Everybody, the entire cast, how difficult yeah. it was to finish the movie after Paul Walker passed away tragically, brother. Mm -hmm. And we know that you guys got through it through prayer. It was very difficult to do scenes where his brothers were uh, filling in for him. Yeah. But I would like to know, Ludacris, what do you think Paul Walker would say to you? Mm -hmm. Honestly, really think about this. <laughs> After you guys finished this project, man. Yeah, he was always so nonchalant, man. It's hard to really, really get him excited, but uh, he's always like, "I'm good, bro." And you know, that's pretty much what he would say, man. You guys did it. You did. You did a good job, and he would keep it at that. And his true emotions, he wouldn't like show them on the outside. He would kind of keep them in, but it would be a. Uh, you, you would know when he was satisfied. And I think that's part of the reason we decided to finish this film because he was 85% done with his parts before his untimely death. And we were all debating about whether or not this film was going to even see the light of day. Wow. Yeah, so with that being said, we all kind of went through the mourning process and we got through it together. And that's the best way we could do it because we all were able to mourn and, and basically we needed to be, become strong in his honor. And that's how we finished everything. And we just knew that he'd be like, you know, don't worry about me. I'm good. I'm good. He will, he will always say that. And I'm sure he would have wanted us to finish the movie. And the way that we did it is probably the best way that it could have possibly been done, man. What about Vin Diesel? I'm sure you've heard about this. Recently came out and said, Furious 7 is going to win Picture of the Year next year. <laughs> Why do you laugh, Luda? <laughs> best picture is coming with Furious 7. The only Fury reason 7. I laugh is because I, I've been there. And, I mean, I love his confidence. And I definitely would love to see that happen. I just know that it's very difficult for action films to get those yeah. type of accolades. And that's not to say that it's not possible. So he's putting it out there. Yeah. And you know what? I I'm going to go ahead and ride with him on that. You know, maybe <laughs> if we start putting it out there and getting the, the fans, because you have to understand the people pretty much dictate everything. Right. So when you don't see something happen enough and you really just kind of wonder why and why things are stereotyped or why yeah. certain things don't make it that way, the people who dictate everything are actually the fans. So now that we're putting it out there in the, in the atmosphere and putting it out there in the world, Maybe there's a way that the fans can dictate whether or not this gets the Oscar. You know, I'm, I'm one of those people that, if you believe, you can achieve. There you and go. I'm, all I was saying was that it's a difficult task, but that doesn't mean it's impossible. Really? Speaking about the impossible and thinking big, man. Yep. Coming out of the South, you spoke about how you were humble. You had a Ferrari. You sold that off. You're like, really? I don't even need a Ferrari. I got my Acura Legend. You're somebody that made it big, has made it big, and still hasn't seen the peak because you're still going up. Thank you, my man. But yet you haven't forgotten about those that are in the valleys and that need your need your help. For sure. And that need that extended hand, especially the youth. And uh, here's a side of your life that I think a lot of people don't hear about, but I think is so inspiring and so amazing, my man, which is the Ludacris Foundation that helps out so many kids across the nation and in the world. And I don't want you to say too much about it because we have a little surprise for you right now. Okay. Coming all the way from the great state of Georgia. House of Representative that we contacted wanted to drop a message for you. Gotcha. Ludacris, this is for you, my man. We were definitely honored um, to recognize Ludacris and the Ludacris Foundation for the great works they have done in the state of Georgia and also across this nation. Um, a lot of times, organizations and stars like him don't get the recognition that he deserves. Their organization has donated over $1.5 million and over 5,000 hours to the youth across this nation. We're just excited being able to have the honor of recognizing not only a rapper, an entrepreneur, a philanthropist. That's something huge here 
in the state of Georgia. So we love Lou Chris all the way from Georgia, and we're glad that Georgia was on his line. And we wish him much success with his new album, Ludiversal, mm-hmm. and the Fast and Furious 7 movie. I'm Georgia State Representative Valencia Stovall, House District 74. Stovall, yep. That was the person that uh, that, that introduced me. So thank you, man. That was a great surprise. Great, great surprise. I see you. your vision kind of went somewhere, man. I mean, do you remember <laughs> when you were a kid growing up in Georgia, not yeah. having much? Right. And now you're helping kids just like that. What does that mean to you, Luda? Man, it's it's random as hell. But when I was a kid, I was uh, I was at a, some park, and I remember uh, professional boxer George Foreman coming mm. there, and I didn't even I didn't even know who he was, but of course I learned who he was after he came there, and uh, it just meant so much just for someone to come to the park that I used to play at. So I never forgot that, and. You know, I think it's that same type of impact that I want to have on people. Yeah. So congratulations, yes. man. That's why the good Lord above continues to bless you and grow you, bro, because you haven't forgotten what about this, what this it, life's all about. Absolutely, man. If, if they want to give back, just pre-order this Ludacris album. You'll be, <laughs> yeah. It's all going to come back around anyway on iTunes right now, man. Let's edge out the competition, man. Let's do this. <laughs> do it for the kids in Georgia. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. Thank you, man. There you go. Ludacris Familia is triplets coming out. <laughs> He's got his real life baby coming and we don't know that the release date yet of the baby but right. it's coming yeah it won't get pushed back like album release dates like i said we'll be album good. you can already pre-order ludiverse on a course at furious seven coming out which is gonna April be third, real man yep. you know we've been hu- you've <laughs> been hustling shelf. bro so we brought you some beers hell yeah thank you man there you go my man Blue your, your whole crew's been already been pounding i'm in the studio this morning <laughs> yeah so- belgian white man <laughs> one of the people in my crew is is from belgium or around that area so that's the <laughs> crazy part about it the buff guy dude yeah, of course man, the that's buff my- guy's from belgium that's my trainer, man. Jason, yeah, what, man. Is, what body part does Luda hate to work out the most? Ah, <laughs> that's an easy one. What body part? Let's see if he knows you. Let's see if he knows he you. Does, he does. He does. Legs. Exactly. I, legs. <laughs> I hate leg day, man. Who doesn't? Who likes leg day except for The Rock? He's the only person in the world. He's the only person in the world who loves leg day. And Jason. And, and, and at Relentless Jason. Which, one's your, which one is his favorite that he's like, yo, let's do this part again? To that's work easy, out. too. Chest day. That's easy, yes. That is so true, I'll do man. chest day seven days a week. Yeah. <laughs> Tuesday they hit chest, and Luda's like, Wednesday, yeah, we're hitting chest again, right? Right, yeah, that's yeah, exactly, yeah. man. I want to do chest every day, man. That's just me. This is how it is. <laughs> Luda, we thank you so much for coming through, man. I know you've been yeah. crazy busy. And uh, you got your casa right here with your boy in the morning, Nina, 92.3 Amp Radio. I know you started off in radio. So uh, I got mad respect for you as a MC, as a rapper, MC on the radio. Chris Lover Lover was his nickname. Thank you, sir. It means the world to me, man. You guys definitely, this has been a good interview. I do a lot of them, so it's not often that people surprise me and really dig into the music and listen to certain things. So, man, good stuff. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They deserve a raise. Give them one. Give us a raise. Can we get a portion of your album sales? (laughs) Now you're going too far. (laughs)